Welcome. Nice Hello, to have Chris. you once again. Ooh, look at that. You brought something, something uh, along there, but I guess you're not going to get into that right away. This yeah. is the secret of this virtual nothing, commissioning. And obviously, it has nothing to do with cows, right? Yeah, that's right. So with cows, we cannot come up now. Now it's all about engineering and virtual commissioning. Wow. And Thomas Edison, uh, as a great pioneer and inventor, I'm really interested to see what you have to offer. Let's go for it. So I am Anne-Marie. I'm Daniel. We both work for Siemens, helping our customers to build the best machines. As a little warm-up for our topic, we also prepared two questions for you to be answered. So please participate in our poll. Take out your smartphone. I know that you all have a smartphone, so please take it out. And scan the QR code here. I don't see your smartphones. Please, we need your support. Go to menti.com and enter the poll code or scan the QR code with your smartphones. Okay, we give you two seconds more in order to come to the poll. And I think everybody is on track now, so then let's have a look at the first question. Oh, um, does it work? Yeah, it works, perfect. Okay, so there was a little error, but we did not produce any error costs, no problem. So here's the first question. Are you able to repair a toaster? Hmm. Actually, this is a good question. So, Daniel, are you able to repair a toaster? Um, I never had a broken toaster at home, so... But thinking of a toaster, it shouldn't be too complex, or... So, I believe in myself, and I say, yes, I can repair a toaster. Hmm. So here's a good one. Let's have a look at your results. And whoo, okay, it's almost equal. The majority of you is not able to repair a toaster. Come on, guys. I thought you're engineers. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I would also <laughs> struggle, but I know with helping of virtual commissioning and testing, I could improve my toaster repairing skills. So coming from a simple thing like a toaster to a more complex one, our everyday lives. And I have another question for you. Would you appreciate if virtual test runs would exist in your everyday life? So what do you mean with virtual test runs? It's about simulating your life, simulating your decisions before you actually realize them. Hmm. I could imagine that for some lives and situations, especially complex ones, this could be helpful. When I think about my driving lessons, for example, having a simulation in advance would definitely be an advantage <laughs> for me and all other involved persons. Well, I have to admit, Annemarie is a great driver. So let's see. Wow, pretty even. So some of you say, no, we do not need virtual test runs. So congratulations. I think you always realize the right decisions. But I'm a big fan of having virtual test runs in my life. And not only in our everyday life, also in machine building, having virtual test runs and testing is definitely... Oh, um, don't panic. Um, we have a little error here, but our technical guys in the back are working to fix it. Well, virtual test runs could have been maybe helpful for our presentation here, but yeah, we do not produce any error costs here. Annemarie, what's now? Can you please bring us back on track? So, I don't know if I can do this in person, but I would love to introduce you to somebody who will be definitely able to help us. Thomas Elva Edison. And you all know who Thomas Edison was, don't you? Yes, so he was the inventor of the light bulb. So let's see if we can switch on our screen again. Perfect. So it worked. Thank God Thomas Edison was here to save our presentation. We wonder, what would a Thomas Edison do today? Okay, he probably would not invent light bulbs anymore, because luckily they already exist. He would rather work on other big inventions, inventions with a great impact on mankind and civilization. But if so, then Thomas Edison would definitely use virtual commissioning. Because as an outstanding inventor, he loved working with trial, 
and error. Let me ask you, what do you think? How many crashed light bulbs did Thomas need in order to come up with his first working light bulb? Was it one, ten, hundreds, or even thousands of crashed light bulbs? In the end, Thomas needed 10,000 crashed light bulbs in order to come up with his first working one. By using virtual commissioning, Thomas Edison would have been able to reduce this huge amount of failed attempts because virtual commissioning would have enabled him to test and optimize the light bulb in a virtual environment before building it. And this means reducing 10,000 failed attempts to the one successful. 10,000 crashed light bulbs? I mean, it's a huge amount of glass, or? In fact, it is as much glass as needed for glazing a building which is five floors high. So we see virtual commissioning does not only save costs, it also saves resources. We are convinced that the machines and technical solutions you are developing are as ingenious as the light bulb, but of course much more complex. Let's have a look at this machine. When engineering it, you have to consider many different factors. So, for example, there's the coordination of the different movements in the machine. You also have to select the right drive in order to realize those movements. Then, also safety aspects have to be considered. And in the end, also the pure controlling functionality has to be evaluated. What we do in virtual commissioning is to create a digital twin of our machine that simulates all these factors in a virtual environment. The digital twin consists of three parts. The first part is the physical and kinematic model, which enables you to test your mechatronical concept of your machine based on cut data. The second part of the digital twin is the electrical and behavioral model, simulating drives or valves. And last but not least, we have a third part of our digital twin, which is the automation model containing the original semantic controller code. This is the theory. Now let's have a closer look. You are all using CAD programs in order to design your machines, don't you? What we do in Annex Mechatronic Concept Designer is to take the original CAD data, enrich them with physical properties such like gravity, and in the end receive a 3D model of our machine that can be moved like the real machine. The simulation software SIMIT simulates all active components and other peripherals. In an easy case, we can simulate drives or valves. In a more complex case, we simulate the behavior of a hydraulic pressure system. So, in short words, with the simulation software SIMIT, we bring our model to life. And last but not least, we also want to control our digital twin. Therefore, we use PLC SIM Advanced. It's a virtual controller for our semantic controllers. PLC SIM Advanced contains the original controlling code of the machine. And this means that you don't need any simulation-specific changes. Yes, and that's it. Like this, we created a virtual version of our machine that enables us to test and optimize machine's functionality in a virtual environment before the real machine is even built. And how virtual commissioning works in real life, we want to show you today at a customer example. Our customer Dronrö from Norway developed a chips packaging machine, which is probably the world's fastest. And how those chips taste, I invite you to grab one of those tiny little tasty chips. Who wants some? So while we distribute the chips, we want to show you now a movie 
um, of Kjell Jerik. And Kjell Jerik is the main programming engineer of Tronrö, and he will explain what virtual commissioning means for them. By the way, Kjell Jerik and his machine are here at the booth today. So you are all invited to discuss with them the deep technical details of their solution and, of course, the benefits they received by using virtual commissioning of Siemens. So I think everybody... Virtual commissioning for us means that we can actually Perfect. test a lot of things in a virtual environment before we need to build the hardware. We realized virtual commissioning with the NX tool and the mechatronic concept designer and the, the PLC seem advanced and together with the TI port. The main advantages we received on this machine with virtual commissioning is especially on the kinematics uh, setup of this machine. Because of having two kinematic systems work in one shared space, we could test out the complete system in a virtual environment. And uh, of course we had some uh, virtual crashes, which uh, saved us a lot of money which saved them a lot of money. In the end, Tronrö was able to reduce the commissioning time of their machine by 25% by using virtual commissioning. But it's not only about the testing of software. It's much more. Development processes that used to run in serial before at Tronrö run now in parallel. And like this, Tronrö changed their development to an agile working mode. This enabled them to reduce the overall development time of the machine by 50%. So let's summarize. In today's world, it's not about making more mistakes or less mistakes. It's about making more mistakes, but in a much shorter time. And by doing this, in the virtual world, we can even save real error costs. Let's now come back to the beginning of our presentation. Let's come back to Thomas Edison. Even he followed this agile principle because he said, it's better to tackle imperfectly than to hesitate perfectly. And this is why we invite you to talk with us about your failures. You all know the so-called fuck-up nights. Sorry for the effort here. It's the same principle. Companies can learn most from their failures, only that we recommend to do those failures in a virtual environment instead. So by implementing virtual commissioning, you will reduce your error costs. You will shorten your development times and like this, bring your whole engineering process to the next level. So we are happy to talk to you at our booth about your individual virtual commissioning solution. And now, back, back to, to Chris. Chris. All right. Did I do that? Is that because of me? I don't think so. We had some troubles before, so, but I'm, I'm convinced you can fix it. You think I can do that? with the light bulb. Give it a try. All right. Um, here we go. Hey. hey. Easy as turning on a light bulb. Thank you very much, Anna Marie, and thank you also, Daniel. Why don't we give them a big round of applause? Don't you agree? Great show here, part two of the No Show, going from no virtualization to go virtualization, and we will talk about going. Where do we go if we want more information? So as I said before, we have the machine here at our booth, and here you can see the booth plan. So use the last 10 minutes uh, to inform yourself or come back tomorrow, and you will find us here in the marked area. Siemens, ingenuity for life.